of the murder verdict, I, I, I just want to show you, pay close attention to this, okay? It's very important. This is the original press release put out by the Minneapolis Police Department right after George Floyd's death. It's tilted. Excuse me. It's titled, excuse me, not tilted. Well, you can say that. But it's titled here. Man dies after medical incident during police interaction. It says the man resisted police and that officers were able to get the, the suspect into handcuffs and noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. It goes on to say that he was transported to a hospital where he died, that no officers were injured in the incident, and that body cameras were activated. But there's a lot in that press release, okay, as well, that talked about, you know, him sitting on the car and all these things that just didn't appear to be in the video, didn't appear to happen. What the press release doesn't say is that while pinned to the ground, George Floyd pleaded with police officers that he could not breathe. Nor does it say that ex-officer Chauvin kneeled on his neck for nearly nine and a half minutes until he stopped breathing. It wasn't a medical incident. It was a murder. I want to bring in now the former captain of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Ron Johnson, who was tasked with restoring peace in Ferguson after Michael Brown's death. Captain, thank you so much. So, that initial police report, it doesn't begin to tell the story here. There's no mention of a knee on the neck or any use of force. If not for bystander video, we'd never have seen the verdict, I believe, that we saw today. If you look at that report, doesn't that show why so many people don't trust the police and maybe why the initial reports um, from police are to be questioned? And I agree with you. The transparency has to start from the beginning. It can't just start when someone uh, shows you a video or someone's there watching. So transparency has to be like no one's watching. What will you do when no one is watching? So that's, and that's how we're going to gain trust. There were other officers there. They didn't intervene to stop Chauvin. What is it going to take to change the culture of the silence among officers known as the blue wall of silence? Well, I think this is an opportunity to change that and change minds and, and send a, a strong message to all people in law enforcement that you have a responsibility. It's about leadership, and each of us and each person in law enforcement has to stand as a leader in that moment and take charge in that it, you have to see people as you see yourself. And when you're coming in contact with someone or your fellow officer, you have an obligation. That is a part of your job. That is a part of what you need to do to preserve safety for everyone and humanity and, 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 and uphold the creed of, that you sworn to. What's the effect of this verdict on policing in America? Well, I think this is an, a new opportunity. I think leaders in law enforcement starting tomorrow need to bring their troops in and have a conversation with them, an open and honest conversation, a conversation that is strong and intentional. And I think that if we take this opportunity, we can create change. But we've got to do training. We can't continue to do check-the-box training. And we can't say, you know what, that's not who we are until it happens. And then we come up with solutions and, and things like that. But I think we've got to just be stronger leaders. And I think it's, it's up to those chiefs and those leaders that are heading those apartments to take a strong stand. What do you say to members of the police department who say, well, we can't do our jobs right now. We're being hindered now. Um, this verdict puts our jobs in jeopardy. People don't understand what we go through out in, uh, as we are policing and what we have to go through just in order to do our jobs every single day. I think the public does understand that it is a tough job. When we're in distress, we call policemen. But we also want you to be fair to everybody that you encounter. And if treating people with humanity makes your job tough, then I would say that you're in the wrong profession. We have a statement. You mentioned the chiefs, and they should gather their, the folks together. We have a, a, a and talk about policing. This is from the Minneapolis Chief of uh, Police, uh, um, um, uh, Arredondo, uh, Madaria Arredondo. And here's what um, what he says. He said, "Quote: I would like to thank the men and women of the Minneapolis Police Department as well as their families. This past year has been difficult and challenging, yet they have continued to show up and serve our community with the respect and dignity they deserve." What do incidents like this do to good officers who are doing the right thing? I think the good officers need to uh, stand strong and know that that doesn't define them. And I think that's what the police department said there. 
is that the many, many of them that testified in court that this is not who we are. And I think they need to unite and stand strong. And I think the chief's uh, words to them are important, meaningful. But those that don't, don't uphold that standard, we need to make sure that we rid them from this profession. When you saw uh, the ex-officer Derek Chauvin being led away in handcuffs, what were your thoughts? You know, my mother always had this saying that it's an amen moment. This was an amen moment for me, and I think it was an amen moment for America. I think uh, justice was served for that family, but I also saw it as a chance for America to take a different stance. And I think we saw that in this trial, that uh, this country came together in an inclusive way that we have not seen it any other case that we've had like this. And so I think it's an opportunity that shows that when we're united as a country and we're inclusive and everyone uh, sees wrong and, and knows that humanity is what we must stand for, that we can move forward. Captain Johnson, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you.